what is going on guys? Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta, bringing you a war recap from a random spin, Elite War, that we just finished with Midwinters. Uh, Midwinters is a CWL uh, clan with, a, I think, a current record of 4-1. and one. These guys are really, really good. Um, just how good? Well, uh, we had um, one extra Town Hall 11 uh, on them, and they still came out with the win by two stars. So these guys really, really are a solid, solid clan. Um, we're going to have a look here at, at some of the war attacks, but uh, real quick, um, I want to give props to our six-pack warriors. We had Trumpy, uh, Friendly, Junior, and only two Town Hall 9s, Igba and Paragon Hunter, of course. Um, so uh, the, the fact that only two Town Hall 9s had six-packs really speaks to how hard these guys' bases are. So um, hats off to the base builders over at Midwinters because your Town Hall 9 bases had us stumped. In fact, we were talking about this in chat, and man, they, they were just some fantastic bases, hard, hard bases to figure out. Uh, okay, without any further ado, let's get into the war attacks. So here are the war statistics. Um, you can see that we had one more triple than Midwinters. Um, however, uh, they, they had us on percent as well as on stars. They beat us by uh, two stars. Let's hop over and look at this. So you can see that they were able to uh, get two stars on all of our 11s. Trumpy had um, a six pack this war. Uh, and if we run down through this friendly, also had a six pack. Uh, Junior had a six pack. And Igba had a six pack and we've got one of his um, attacks planned to watch here. I actually had one planned for last video but uh, somehow skipped over it. Um, he has been kind of a penta beast lately and so we're gonna watch one of his pentas. And Paragon Hunter of course as I always say had a six pack. Um, okay so on the other side of the coin you can see they had one less Town Hall 11 than us so I mean huge props there they 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 really really came through um, and, and and gave us a very very tough war um, they were we were able to only two star one of their 11s and this is something that we continue to struggle with is is getting two stars on on their 11s um, by our 10s uh, and in fact, Nate is an 11, and so, oh, no he's not, this is his 10, <laughs> Nate has a has an 11, but um, this must have been his 10. So, uh, some tough bases, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I, I've been playing this game for uh, three years now, and I don't think I've ever come across Town Hall 9 bases as hard as what we saw here. Uh, the fact that only two of our Town Hall 9s were able to get triples... And both of those, or I mean, we're able to get six packs, and both of those uh, people um, had th their six packs were all cleanup hits, no fresh triples. We did have some fresh triples, don't get me wrong, um, but it, it's a testament to how good these guys' bases are. Uh, usually we're talking about having six or eight, um, some, some much higher number of Town Hall 9s with six packs, and it just didn't happen this war. Uh, the, these guys really, really had some tough bases, and you're going to get to see some of those today. So without further ado, uh, let's hop in and look at this. We're going to start out with, um, we'll start out at the bottom. And we're going to watch an attack by uh, Bazu. Bazu is fairly new to Invicta. I think he's maybe been there um, a week or two, uh, but... So this base actually doesn't look that bad. If you look at his army composition, you can see that he is coming with a P.E.K.K.A. smash. Um, at, at first when I was watching this, I thought, oh no, his funnel got messed up. But I think that he set the funnel exactly how he wanted. My guess is he was hoping to get this air defense with his queen here, and that is not going to happen. So he starts bringing in um, a couple of P.E.K.K.A.s here and hoping to push that queen a little bit and she did not go. Uh, what's going to happen when she turns this corner is that air defense is going to catch all of those healers and just eat them alive. Over here we have a wizard who is starting to set the funnel on that side of the, of, of the base. Uh, then he starts bringing in the Valks. Um, I was worried 
that he would not have his edge set over here for his funnel. You see that the air defense takes out all of the queen's healers. Uh, fortunately, he had healers in the back end or in the in his uh, back pocket there for uh, the technically for the Pekkas, but they wind up being for everything here. Um, bowlers are down. Valks are now into the center, and uh, th those Pekkas, though they don't have any healers on them. Are, are still hanging in there. You're going to see, I, I think both of his P.E.K.K.A.s actually live. Healers wind up getting on the, the P.E.K.K.A.s right here. Um, they heal those P.E.K.K.A.s up, and it doesn't take a whole lot. Remember that healers do full heal on uh, normal troops and only half heal on heroes, so P.E.K.K.A.s are both healed all the way back up at this point. Uh, a single healer on them that's just gone there because of a black bomb. So uh, we've got bowlers up here tanking around, but the vast majority of the kill squad is, is, is right there. Or, I mean, I call it the kill squad. It's really the main attack is right in here um, and getting kind of hammered by this uh, Tesla. doesn't matter. Uh, they bust out. Um, the queen is eventually going to go out there. I think all she winds up getting is that whiz tower right there. Uh, then she's going to have to turn around, but he hasn't even used the queen ability yet. Oh yeah, does lose a P.E.K.K.A. So he's down to a king, one P.E.K.K.A., queen, and a wizard, oh, and a minion. Uh, pops the queen's ability right here, and she busts through that wall. Um, only two defenses left. It's not going to be a big deal. That P.E.K.K.A. is basically full health, or, or, or over half at least. And that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Bazu. Okay, let's move on, and we are going to look at Cass again. So Cass was in the last video. Uh, Cass winds up in this video as well. It's a very cool attack. Um, the reason, I mean, it's, it's a queen walk Vaho, no golems. And the, one of the things that I really like about this attack, and I think that he was trying to do this, I think he was trying to force the queen into this highway, and I love seeing these highways and bases, to be honest. It's one of my favorite things to try to push troops to. Um, it works very nice for bowlers. Uh, and I guess if you're going to put a highway like that, you should throw some spring traps or something in there. Uh, I, I, I seldom see spring traps in those highways, but at any rate, his queen is not going to go in there. You can see um, she's, she's done a lot of work here. Uh, has not pulled the CC yet, but she will in just a second. And that CC is a P.E.K.K.A. and a Loon. Um, anytime you see a P.E.K.K.A. pop out and you're doing a Queen Walk, get a little bit antsy. You know you're going to have to use your ability. And he pops it just a little bit early, maybe. Not that it really matters. Uh, but pops the ability, takes down that uh, P.E.K.K.A. in with um, his Valks. And notice... Uh, Unlike what we we see so often, it is Valks in the CC instead of bowlers. Valks go in, but he didn't get his jump spell down in, in time, and the Valks just run right back out. Uh, at this point, I'm sure Cass is thinking, "Great, this is this is not going to work out." But this is exactly why you don't give up on an attack. Those Valks see that queen, they pull in there, they kill that queen. He just drops a. Uh, <laughs> drops a jump spell there, uh, doesn't actually do much good at all, but we're going to fast forward here. He's still got 12 hogs sitting there. He starts bringing in the hogs at this point. Those Valks are just going to continue running around the base. Uh, note, no spells for the hogs. Well, I mean, he had a couple of rages that he was just holding in the back pocket. Uh, drops both of those rages in the center there to try and push through stuff. And finally, he does get the queen to walk up there, but by the time she gets there, that jump spell is gone and she doesn't wind up using it. Doesn't matter. Um, hogs galore. Uh, just enough, actually, <laughs> to get this finished off. Um, one hog left. He beats on this archer t or on this wizard tower, and that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Cass. All right, let's move up. We are going to look at number 22, uh, Hannibal. This was Hannibal's first war with Invicta, um, and he's doing something really cool here. So you can see this base has this big open spot, but the compartments are all very tiny. And so uh, you initially might think, oh, well, let's do a, um, a, a golem avalanche. 
But with all of these little compartments, it's just impossible to get the through that with the jump spells that you get. So uh, he comes in with a shattered entry um, uh, hobo. And once they're all in there, drops one jump, gets it down. Uh, I'll show you here in a second. It was driving me crazy. I was like, drop that other jump spell. Um, but the goal here is to clear out this whole uh, this this whole bottom half with um, a hobo portion, and you can see down here he's got two drags, and that's to get rid of that queen up there. And so the drags actually take out the queen as soon as she as soon as she shoots them, they're going to aggro on her, and then they're going to clean this whole side down this way. Uh, this expo is on ground only. Um, the troops that he has left are going to take out that air defense, and once that air defense is gone, there are only three defenses left that can even touch hogs. <laughs> yeah, I wanted him to throw that jump spell a lot earlier when his gauntlet or when his um, bowlers were stuck behind this wall and trying to beat their way through. That's all right. It wound up work wound up working out anyway, and that is it. It's just clean up now. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Hannibal. All right. Iggy. Iggy hit number 16. This He, he actually did two pentas here, and I want to talk through this penta because I thought it was a very, very cool attack. So, when you want to do a pentaloon, there's a few things that you need to know. If it's a fresh hit, then you want to be able to get to and kill that CC before you start the penta portion, and you want to be able to get that queen. There's a few different ways you can get that queen, and what Iggy has done is brought three skeleton spells. He's going to wait until that queen is distracted and then roast her with skeleton spells. He's also going to pull out this CC and kill the CC. So he's going to be deploying his heroes right around here. But look at that's all he's got as far as a kill squad. It is a king, a queen, and three skelly spells, and that's his goal. Now he also plans on zap quaking these two things. But you'll see that he actually forgets, and he drops his hound too early, and it starts heading to that, and then he nervously zap quakes it, uh, but it's too little too late, and that hound is gone. Um, so, uses a loon to uh, remove a um, mortar tower there, and king is down, queen is down, poison, and the CC is about done. Now the queen is distracted, and out comes these skelly spells. All three skelly spells, and they just eat that queen alive. There's nothing else there in there. Um, so queen is done, CC is done, and this is what I was talking about. He forgot to zap quake. Does it quickly when he realizes that his hound is going to the wrong uh, air defense, but unfortunately, that is it. A lost hound. Nothing you can do about that. Uh, at this point, it is just, uh, let's get back on track. So, a couple of hounds down, uh, gets a hay spell in there. Not quite where he had planned to use the hay spell, I don't think. I'm trying to remember what his sketch was like, and I didn't think that it had a hay spell there. I thought that the hay spell was here um, to push those uh, loons to that AD very quickly, because you've got two overlapping ADs here. So, uh, this hound, one hound is about to get killed because of those double ADs, and the second hound barely makes it to that AD, and it's going to get killed, but he's able to get it with, not this loon, I believe a second loon comes along, and it drops, and that is it, has not used his queen's ability yet, there he pops it, and look at all those hounds, that is it, it's cleanup time, tree stars in the bag, nice job Iggy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, skeletons popped and everything stopped and ran after the skeletons. Okay. Um, last but not least, we are going to look at Gazda. Uh, uh, before we do that, I will know. We, though we didn't have any... Uh, oh, no, never mind. 
I was going to say, um, we had some Town Hall 10 uh, triples, but they were not 10v10 triples, and so we're not, we're, we're not even going to have a look at them. We're just going to keep on pushing through. So, uh, Gazda hit number 15. And you can see he's got a queen walk queued up here, a queen walk lalo. Now something happens here that's very interesting, and Gazda is a kind of a cautious guy. He plans for things to go wrong, and here, um, as soon as he got done, he said, oh, thank goodness I brought extra wall breakers. So a lot of us walk in with four wall breakers, right? A test wall breaker, and then uh, the three wall breakers that we need to get into the wall. He's going to queen charge here. And you'll see he's going to drop that and then drop three wall breakers, oh, four wall breakers, and a Tesla pops and he has a wall breaker fail. Fortunately, he's got a couple more wall breakers. He sends them in. Uh, wall is opened up and he is good to go. So this is actually a bit of a scary attack because you can see that he's he's got uh, two hounds and then a third hound in, in the CC. Um, but these air defenses, only one of them uh, can you get with the queen. So he, he winds up getting the CC pulled, getting the enemy queen, and that is the two kind of main objectives when you're doing an air attack. And so he gets those taken care of. Um, but then he sends all three of his hounds in here, and one bursts immediately. And he's still got two more ADs, one really, because the queen will take care of one of those. Um, but... Fortunately, those hastes get to those AD or get those loons to those ADs very quickly. And there we go. Now, here's the bad thing. One hound pops. This other hound does not have much left in him at all. Uh, but fortunately, he's got a rage, and I'm not sure if it's the pups under rage or the hounds or I mean the loons under rage. That actually, it was, it was the pups under rage that actually take down that last AD. Obviously, not part of the plan, <laughs> but it did work. I think using the rage there was part of the plan. Um, but uh, having it taken down by pups, probably not. It doesn't matter. Um, this base is just wrecked. It was a, a great attack. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Gazda. Gazda's also a brand new member of Invictus. So um, some, some new members showing some pretty awesome attacks. In one of the hardest wars um, I think that I've ever been in in Invicta. Uh, just um, real quick, a note to Midwinters. Props to whoever is, is to your base building team over there. Uh, we were all really, really struggling. All of the Town Hall 9s were struggling with those Town Hall 9 bases. Um, seriously, in, in, in three years or, or almost three years of playing, the hardest bases I've ever seen, hands down. So uh, great job over there, guys. Um, good, solid win. Uh, we had the advantage, and, and you guys still came up with the win. It was an awesome job. Um, all right, this is Dr. D. I am signing out. Clash hard.